I'm sorry to tell you guys this, but most diesel trucks are going to have an EGR failure in their lifetime. In fact, most trucks are going to have two or three EGR failures in their lifetime. The EGR cooler is an emissions device, and the reason why it is troublesome is because it flows exhaust gases through it and coolant around it. As an emissions device, the strategy is to take a little bit of exhaust gas from the stream and route it back to the intake to be burned a second time. This in itself can be troublesome for the engine, but the temperatures, gases, and deposits involved are also detrimental for the EGR cooler. We'll take a deeper dive in this episode of Amsoil Garage. Hey guys, I'm Greg Jones for Engine Builder, and today on Amsoil Garage, we're discussing the ins and outs of the EGR cooler. Again, the EGR cooler is an emissions device that recirculates a portion of exhaust gases back into the intake manifold via a butterfly valve. The amount of exhaust gas recirculating varies by manufacturer and it varies by engine loading and a bunch of other parameters, but it could be roughly 5% to 15% by volume. While some engineers thought this was a really good idea, the reality is it's not a great thing for the engine for many reasons. For starters, that's not good, clean air being recirculated, which is not good for combustion. Secondly, it's hot air, which is also terrible for combustion. While an EGR cooler routes exhaust gases back to the intake, you can't route 800 to 1000 degree air back to the intake, because that would be insane. So, that air is slowed down and flowed across a bunch of tubes in the cooler that's surrounded by coolant temperatures. That means, at best, we cool the exhaust gas down to the coolant temperature for the engine, which is probably around 200 degrees. Again, you've got warm, dirty air rolling back into your intake of your engine. Now, because it's dirty air, you also have your CCV system, which stands for closed crankcase ventilation, taking oil particles evaporated from the sump and routing them through the EGR cooler. Now, with that comes sticky, dirty, hot particles that need to cool down as well. Anytime you have a large temperature transition, those particles will want to stick to the surfaces of that cooler, and that over time is how EGR coolers fail. Those sticky, dirty, hot particles keep building layers and layers and layers, and pretty soon you choke off the EGR cooler's flow. Because the truck is measuring flow through that system, it'll start to give you check engine lights that your EGR system is not working properly. This is a well-known issue, so a shop will pull the EGR cooler off and show you that it's plugged and they'll replace it. The question is, how soon will it happen? Well, like most things, this is another component which has a timeline dependent on how you drive your truck. It might sound counterintuitive, but the harder you work the truck, the less exhaust gases go back through the EGR to the intake. So if you're the guy working your truck a lot, it may last longer. If you're the guy who drives around an empty truck to the grocery store, your EGR probably won't last as long. The other component to that is what engine oil you use. If you have an engine oil that has a lot of evaporation, that sticky mess will combine with your soot particles from your exhaust and plug your cooler sooner. If you have an oil that does not evaporate as much, then your system will last longer. If you want to know how susceptible your oil is to evaporation, look for the NOAC value. There's a number of things that can contribute to oil evaporation and oil consumption, but it's been proven that the lower the NOAC number, the better off you are from having engine oil leave the sump and find its way out the pipe. Generally, conventional oils will suffer the most from evaporation issues, while synthetic oils, like those from AMSOIL, typically have a lower NOAC value. Again, there's a few variables that control how quickly the EGR could get plugged but EGR failure could definitely happen at less than 100,000 miles, no question. If you're lucky, it'll be more than 100,000 miles. And if it happens on the early side of your mileage, hopefully it happens while you're still under warranty on your truck. If you're unlucky and it happens outside of your warranty, it can be a spendy component, plus the shop time involved to replace it. It's not an easy fix either, because you've got to bust into the cooling system and flush that system as part of the work too. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the EGR cooler and the substances it sees all the time, failure is inevitable if you own the truck long enough. The question is, can you really do something about it? 
Again, the best thing you can do is use the best engine oil you can find with the lowest evaporation rate, which helps your CCV system and helps ease that sticky mess in your EGR cooler. The other thing you can do is make sure to drive and use your truck for what it was designed to do. Trucks weren't designed to just go to the grocery store or putt around as a daily driver. It's meant to be a daily puller and a workhorse. When you make the truck work, that drives the heat up in your exhaust and helps smooth out these problems. But if you're not working the truck, you're gonna be the first guy to suffer. All right, guys, that does it for this episode of Amzola Garage. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Visit amsoil.com for more information.